Maryland is implementing several programs because of a state law called the Climate Solutions Now Act, which set Maryland on a new path to reduce its climate pollution. Thanks for tuning into this overview of one of these programs, the Building Energy Performance Standards, aka BEPS. Buildings in Maryland are a top contributor of climate pollution and poor air quality, even more so than our power plants. The BEPS program focuses on the largest of these buildings, which we call covered buildings. These covered buildings are 35,000 square feet or larger, excluding any parking garage area. If you need a visual example of 35,000 square feet, think of your average grocery store. Owners of these covered buildings need to annually track the performance of their building starting this year in a process called benchmarking, which uses a free federal tool Energy Star Portfolio Manager to collect the energy consumption and characteristics of the covered building. More on this tool in a few moments. The first benchmarking reports are due to MDE by September 1st, 2025, with data from calendar year 2024. Starting next year, benchmarking reports will be due every June 1st. For the next five years, the focus is on annual benchmarking in assessing the performance of these covered buildings. Starting in 2030, buildings will need to start meeting performance targets that guide buildings down to net zero emissions by 2040. Buildings can also opt to pay for their excess emissions over the standards. Opting to pay is still seen as being fully compliant with the regulation. We estimate that a third of the covered buildings are already achieving this final standard of net zero which means that when you start benchmarking, you could be in compliance with one of the standards, so your runway to compliance lengthens. Additionally, MDE intends to adopt an energy efficiency standard called Site Energy Use Intensity, or EUI, in 2027, and recommends not installing inefficient electric equipment, like electric resistance heating. We estimate that there are over 9,000 covered buildings in the state of Maryland. Predominantly, they are warehouses, offices, multifamily housing, and retail stores. These buildings are located in every county in the state, but are clustered mainly between Baltimore and DC along the I-95 corridor. Certain types of covered buildings are exempt from BEPS. Those are certain historic buildings, K-12 schools, manufacturing buildings, agricultural buildings, demolished buildings, and buildings owned by the federal government. There are also additional flexibilities for providers of affordable housing and for buildings experiencing financial distress or low or no occupancy. Due to new legislation, the BEPS program will be changing on October 1st. Many of these changes will be phased in over the next few years so please sign up for our email list to hear the latest. I'll walk you through the high level changes now. Buildings in Montgomery County, which has its own county program, are no longer required to participate in the statewide program. Covered buildings that have a sensitive compartmented information facility, also known as a SCIF, when operated by a defense agency, intelligence agency, the U.S. General Services Administration, the state, or a contractor to such agency will be able to apply for exemption from the EUI targets. These buildings will also be able to apply for additional flexibility if they have trouble meeting the benchmarking requirements. Hospitals will be eligible to apply for total exemption. And covered building owners will need to pay $100 annually for each covered building they report. This small fee will help MDE provide resources to covered building owners as they work to modernize and meet the performance standards. And as we look towards the performance standards in 2030 and beyond, there will be new exclusions and credits in the program. Energy use associated with steam sterilization equipment and emergency backup generators in healthcare facilities, labs, assisted living and nursing facilities, military buildings, and buildings used for life sciences will be excludable. Additionally, 
the energy use for emergency backup generators will also be excludable for critical infrastructure. Credits will be available for on-site renewable energy generation against the EUI standards and on-site use of biomethane against the net direct emission standard. So how do you get started? First, you'll want to determine the coverage status of your building. For more information on doing so, and also the appropriate next steps, go to mde.maryland.gov slash start BEPS. There are two main tools building owners are going to need to use in BEPS. First, there's the MD BEPS portal. That is MDE's in-house tool, which has the covered buildings list and map, exemption forms, and your unique building IDs. The second tool is the EPA's Energy Star Portfolio Manager. This is where building owners will upload their energy consumption data and share it with MDE. Energy Star Portfolio Manager will provide a full picture of a building's performance and the pollution it creates. Poorly performing buildings can then be identified and steered to resources to help them modernize, leading to cleaner air, healthier homes and workspaces, and energy cost savings. The tool is free to use and has a suite of online trainings, as well as a service provider directory if you'd like to pay a company to benchmark for you. A good way to think about these tools would be that the MD BEPS portal is like a hardware store. It's where you go to get the materials you need to get the job done. Energy Star Portfolio Manager is the job site. It's where you go to construct and finalize the project. So that concludes this BEPS overview. If you have any questions regarding the BEPS program, please email our team at beps.mde at maryland.gov or give us a call at 410-537-3183.